Better shake your booties for black girl nerds. Perfect, perfect. Well, I thank you so much for your time. You know, I've had a chance to talk to you on the carpet and I saw you at Essence, but I think back to our very, very first conversation before P Valley became the juggernaut that it's become. And you are still that same. Yeah. I, and I love that conversation so much because what was so meaningful to me about the show is, you know, I shared some things with you about my family who have, I have similar, like non-binary people in my family and how meaningful it was to me personally to see that displayed on camera and, and your beautiful work. And now here we are on the other side, getting ready for season three and you are still that wonderful, humble, loving, caring personality that I remember from that first interview. So now getting to this point, how have you been able to just type of maintain that essence in an industry that wants to constantly change the creatives within it? Come on for the real question. <laughs> and, and the real answer to that is my faith, is my faith. And because of my faith and how I was raised, um, I go to God every day. I have my own conversations, you know, um, that is my peace um, and I stay grounded. I also feel honestly because of the years that I had of the doors being slammed in my face of not having opportunity or saying you are not enough of this, you're not enough of that. It hurt back then. Um, and it was challenging to get through those processes for real. But I have to say, it is because of what I've been through that I stand today and why I know who I am without question. And I do not require a studio, a director, a casting person, an agent, another person in the world to tell me who I am. Affirmation is nice, but I feel that, you know, when you know what you got, you got it. And um, it's not something that you have to boast about. You just have to just be and you have to be able to deliver, you know. Um, so I guess that's how I do it. Mm -hmm. And within within that realness that you and, you know, the other cast members have brought, it's kind of put P Valley in this unique place of not only being kind of a, a groundbreaking show, but like a flagship show mm. that other non-binary LGBTQ people with familial issues that people can point to and see more of themselves in. Is it a burden to carry the weight of having that placed upon the show? Is it refreshing? You know, what are your thoughts when people say, thank you so much, I see myself in a place that I've never seen myself before? I don't think it's any more of a burden than just walking around in my black skin every day. You know, that in and of itself is a revolution to have, especially when we have happiness and when we have joy, you know, in this world that says we should not uh, or is constantly, you know, having obstacles in front of us that we must jump over and then you add on to their being a member of the LGBTQ plus community and the, the, the burdens that come along with that. Um, but I feel that when people say that to me, I am always, it's not even humble. It's, I'm reminded of how far things have come and how far I have come. You know, I, I think about what I saw growing up and, and what I watched and there was not even the conversation of what this person, how this person identifies. It was more so inferred and you always had to, you know, I used to use the, the reference how Red Fox used to say, he never said gay, he never said, if they said funny, that was the word, or they said, you know, little. Mm -hmm. And you always took that to interpret, oh, they must be gay. And then gay has expanded into bisexual, into pansexual, into, you know, non-gender conforming. I think that we continue to evolve because we are giving care and concern to the people. Um, so when people come to me and they are affected by the story, how they see it, it oftentimes, it all, well, people come to me and they say, like maybe from the queer space, if they are queer identifying, what it does for them. But the conversation never is left 
only in one space. It's always mm -hmm. touched on multi facets, whether it's I saw my mom was like this, or I saw I had a sister that was that, and I, you know, my brother is like Big L, and then my, you know, I was like Diamond at one point, you know. So I, I love being a part of a project that is so reflective of all of my cousins and all of the things and people that I love. I don't eat pig feet, but I got aunts and uncles that do. <laughs> and so, you know what I'm saying? So like to be able to have that point of entry of interest for them, it's interesting to be able to have uh, work that speaks in the vernacular, like Toni Morrison says, that is for us. I, dare, I don't have to do any explanation of what it means when I say go on over there. Because mm -hmm. you know what going over there means. <laughs> you know, that could be going to the store or that could mean go sit down in your room. Mm -hmm. You know, but you know that from the experience and those connective ties that that you have when you hear it, when when I encounter people in real life and that same kind of familiarity is there, it's like, I really don't know you, but you really feel like I do. I love that. Uh, people, we, uh, we all know these people, these characters or people resemble that. It's just how open and open-minded you are to receiving them and their authentic selves that it boils mm -hmm. down. Because everyone in every walk of life, color, creed, race, it doesn't even matter. Everyone knows someone in their life that is an Uncle Clifford or a Mercedes or a Little mm -hmm. Murder, no matter what. And so hopefully P Valley will continue to, to kind of dig the earth for people to feel comfortable even acknowledging and not worry about other people's biases about who they know, who they don't know. And exactly. so, you know, that's what I've always liked about this show too. Even like characters like Keyshawn, you know, played by Shannon Thornton, you know, there's so many, this, this is a character in a world where we're getting to see what domestic violence really can be like. You know, and when people get frustrated, oh, like, why did she leave? Why did she do this? Not understanding that in real life, oftentimes it takes people like seven times to try to leave before they are successful, if they are successful. And to be a part of a story where there is care in that, where we don't have to burn through the story and get it all done in, in two episodes and it feels like, oh, that's Hollywood, where you actually are sitting in it with her and you're experiencing what she goes through and you see them why she loves the freedom that she can experience at the pink and what pole dancing does for her because that can be the solitary place where you find your flight and where you find that and i feel like um even the magic and the dance of the show you know all the glitz and the glamour of it it's coming from a space of fighting and crawling, you know, tooth and crook, like this is what I'm going to do to get my joy. Mm -hmm. I don't care what you say, you're not going to take that from me and figuring out how you find that. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you said that, you know, a lot is made to uh, ado about the sex in the, in the show, but it's not, to me, it's not that. It's more about the sensuality and the connection of these people. And I think back to the very first episode of the season, how the show was adapting in its own way to COVID and the restrictions and masking and all of the things that we had to experience or continue to experience mm -hmm. while COVID is a very real thing. And I love that scene of you coming out and you're speaking to the patron who's in the car, he's going to go through the car wash and then the ladies are doing their things and it's really, really sexy and no one's having sex. To me, those are some of the sexiest scenes of the show. So tell what on the shoot days for something like that, because I'm sure it's very labor intensive. There's lots of different angles. We're seeing his perspective. We're seeing your perspective, the dancers and all of the things. How 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 long does it take to create like a scene like that? Um, Pussyland in specifics uh, that that the dance sequence of it all took that, well, the dance sequence of it all took maybe about, I'm gonna say maybe eight to 10 hours. Wow. You know, <laughs> just to get that because of all the moving parts, you know, you have the water, we have the pole, 
We had the fire from Mercedes Hills. We had the horse from the merry-go-round. <laughs> uh, you had the girls dancing in the cages on the side. And it was a real, it was a real, we, Jeffrey Pratt Gordon is our production designer. And he and the team that he assembled, they literally built this in the middle of the parking lot outside the exterior. So the intention behind it was to create a space that feels like what a, a, a being and the experience that one might have inside of a vagina. When you're inside the womb of a woman, like what does it feel like? That's why the, the entrance of the car wash are labia lips. Um, and I think that because it's so poetic in its intention and in its description, it doesn't come across overt and, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's not just sensational for just, you know, for just titillizing purposes. You know, you're literally seeing like, oh, these people literally are taking COVID and as a small business are creating a whole new way that they can create still revenue for themselves because everyone doesn't have the access to the PPE loans. Everyone doesn't even know how to fill out those paperwork. Some people ain't even paying any taxes because they can't afford. There's so many different, you know, hooks and crooks that folks are going through in that community, you know, in Chukalisa, which re is reflective of the real world. And I feel like, um, that's the gift as the artist to be a part of something like that. So it is extremely labor intensive because you have that and then you have to do it with your doubles because mm. every other, you can't, like, it's just not possible to do, uh, do that for eight to 10 hours. And then the other four hours that we have on set to, to go and film this other scene that you have to do. So you have to switch out with your doubles and things like that. I remember that was really hard because uh, it was walking with that cape. That cape was designed by uh, Alita uh, Bailey, our costume designer. She did the first half of the season and then Tiffany Hasborn did the second half of the season. But that costume, is made that cake rather is made out of 183 bottles of crown royal the bags the purple bags of crown wow. royal wow so that's what that costume is made out of and you can and for me as the actor that then told me when i read that because that's written in the script this crown royal cake and when i read that i knew emotionally that the pandemic was then affecting uncle clifford in a certain way that oh she's drinking a lot Mm -hmm. She really was going through it. She then went through the, the, the stash at, at, the, at the paint, the stash at home, and then said, you know what? I, I'm bored. I got to do something else with it. I got to create a cake with it. And so like that's that level of creativity and ingenuity is, is reflective of who we are as a person, as a people, for, you know, our community. So from the costume design, from the production design, it all influences the acting and the dancing. So it just all kind of... It's like dressing at Thanksgiving. And, and, and to think, all I ever did with the Crown Royal bags was put pennies in it. See, I should have been making like a whole cake. I could have been doing a whole bunch of other things with it. Right. So I, just the evolution, well, not the evolution, just the journey of Uncle Clifford this season. It was just, it was, it was brilliant. It was brilliant to see you embody this character through the the ups and downs of a relationship, trying to navigate that, try to live authentically in your truth and be out while being involved with a person who didn't have that comfort or didn't have that ability to live that way. I mean, it was just so touching and just so amazing to watch. When you and, and Jay Fonz had to have conversations on shoot days about what you're going to film, and the chemistry and the things that you wanted to convey on screen. Did you guys have a process amongst each other of how to talk through these things? And do you have similar philosophies on how to how to execute the scene right? What type of conversations did you have with each other? Well, we always have conversations about telling the truth. Like what is the truth of the moment? And then you have the conversations of what is it that we as artists are comfortable with and how do we do that? It's extremely technical, you know, it's before I was major, you know, on this platform, I would hear, you know, different celebrities talk about, oh, it's so technical. And I would be like, mm -hmm, it's technical, mm -hmm, it's technical. But it really, really, really is, you know, there's padding that's there, there, there. 
there's camera angles. Sometimes, like I remember, um, it's the is it episode ten? No, it is ep- no, it's, it is episode ten. It's episode ten um, when uh, Lil Murder and Uncle Clifford are in the bed together, and I remember the fact that you know Uncle Clifford is in like all the under her undergarments, you know what I'm saying? There's little negligees, you know, there's a, a jock strap and some stockings. That's actually the costume. <laughs> and literally the camera person was in the bed with us, standing oh like he, this camera person <laughs> was wow. straddling his shoulder. His foot was like right here, my face right here, his foot was right here, and his other foot is behind my back because he's getting a shot when my hand was up in the air and came down and was then crawling up uh, jail funds as the murder's back. Um, and you, one could think, oh, it was so, it's so beautiful and it's very intimate. And it is, but you always have to think about what is the lens seeing versus what your eyes are seeing. So as an actor, once you get into understanding that, it makes things a little easier. Um, but we always start with the truth. Uh, one of the things that J.L. Alphonse said in, in the beginning when we all first met was he said, my, I forget his mentor's name, but he said that the man always told him to just breathe and believe. And that is a, a, a like a, 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 a saying that we all have been saying for the last three years, you know, amongst each other, is just being able to breathe and believe. And when we first met, he and I, because the cast, we all got together like via phone and stuff before we even met in person because of the nature of the show to express, listen, this is who I am. This is my family. These are my children. This is the kind of man I am. This is how I move in the world. Let's be honest with one another because this is a story in which we are literally all naked and not talking about physically naked, but emotional nakedness and uh, psychological nakedness and being stripped down. And as Black actors and as marginalized people from marginalized communities, we don't always get that opportunity. So it was like, we have, let's, let's go guns blazing and let's just tell the truth in that manner. So I'm happy that it's working and people are responding to it this way. And then you cut the scene and go, okay, cut. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, how it happens sometimes, you know, it's not like, um, it's not romantic at all. It's not romantic at all in like in real life. It's just so technical. So you, as the artist, you have to go to another place that's totally inside to to make it something that it really is not. So there it is. They are giving me the hook like the Sandman. It is an honor. I am so excited to see you all back. It is always a good day when P-Valley is on the air, when you are on the air. Bless you. Have a wonderful holiday season. Thank you for your time as always. And then until we meet again. What else did you want to ask? Did you have something else that was burning? I mean, I could talk to you all day, to be honest, but I want to be respectful of your time because, you know, being respectful of your time helps the show continue to reach new ears. So we will connect again someday soon. This is why I am with Black Girl Nerds all day, y'all. Oh, this is what I'm saying. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Until we meet again. Happy holidays. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Happy. Better shake your booties for Black Girl Nerds. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds.